Jakarta is a city in crisis, sinking, flooding, and on the verge of collapse. Over 40% of the city already lies below sea level, and by 2050, entire districts could be swallowed by water. But the real catastrophe isn't just the rising tide, it's the ground vanishing beneath Jakarta's feet. Built on unstable, waterlogged lands, part of the city are plunging over 25 centimeters per year one of the fastest rates of urban subsidence on Earth. Floods paralyze streets, relentless traffic traps millions, and unchecked groundwater extraction is hollowing out the city's foundation. The situation is so extreme that Indonesia is doing something almost unheard of, abandoning its own capital. A new $35 billion city, Nusantara, is being built 870 miles away, a last-ditch effort to escape Jakarta's fate. But how did the city's geography become such a complete disaster, and can anything be done before the waves claim it for good? If you were looking for the worst possible place to build a megacity, Jakarta would be at the top of the list. The city sits on what used to be a swamp, making its foundation about as stable as a wet sponge, unlike cities anchored on bedrock. Jakarta sits on a shifting base of loose alluvial soil, soft, porous, and prone to sinking under the sheer weight of urban expansion. Historically, much of the region was a marshland that Dutch colonizers attempted to drain and convert into an urban hub. Centuries later, the legacy of that transformation still haunts Jakarta, as poorly maintained canals, insufficient drainage systems, and unregulated developments have pushed the city to a dangerous tipping point. Compounding the problem is the city's fragmented approach to urban planning. Over decades of rapid growth, skyscrapers sprouted next to informal settlements, and roads were built without considering the natural flow of water. These haphazard developments effectively created artificial dams, blocking the 13 rivers that snake through the metropolis. Unlike cities like Tokyo, which has slowed subsidence through strict water management, or Shanghai, which injects water back into depleted aquifers, Jakarta has no large-scale mitigation in place. Even Mexico City, which sinks at nearly 50 centimeters per year, has more advanced infrastructure to manage subsidence, yet Jakarta continues to sink unchecked. During colonial times, channels were initially constructed to direct water out to sea, but modern expansion ignored these historical waterways. Now, whenever monsoon rains sweep in, and in Jakarta, this can unleash torrential downpours, the water simply has nowhere to go. Jakarta's average elevation is only about 8 meters above sea level, but that figure is deceiving. The ground is already below sea level in many districts, especially in the northern regions. Residents who have lived in neighborhoods like Marabaru and Pluit for generations find themselves battling not only rainwater, but also seawater that seeps in during high tides. Boats have become a peculiar yet essential mode of transport in certain streets. It's a reminder of how dramatically the landscape has shifted under the relentless pressure of human expansion and environmental mismanagement. Yet, sinking land and persistent flooding are only the surface symptoms of a bigger problem. Jakarta's foundation is crumbling beneath its own weight. The city's topography, once a lush wetland, was never meant to support so many towering structures. The soaring office buildings and shopping malls symbolize economic growth, but they also accelerate the physical descent of entire districts. Though Jakarta's geological setup is a major culprit, a self-inflicted water crisis intensifies the city's downward spiral. Nearly half of Jakarta's population has no access to a reliable water network, leaving millions with no choice but to pump groundwater from fragile underground aquifers, an invisible lifeline that is now collapsing beneath them. This was a makeshift solution when the city's population was smaller, but with millions now depending on it, the consequences are dire. When vast amounts of groundwater are pumped out faster than natural replenishment can occur, the ground physically collapses into the spaces once occupied by water. This phenomenon has accelerated alarmingly in recent decades. North Jakarta experiences some of the worst subsidence rates on the planet, with parts dropping by as much as 20 centimeters annually. Those figures rival or exceed sinking hotspots in Bangladesh, China, and even Mexico City. Compounding matters is the weight of Jakarta's sprawling infrastructure, endless rows of high-rises, shopping centers, and massive housing complexes pushed down on the already compromised soil. As aquifers empty, there's less support beneath, and the inevitable result is a city in collapse. Numerous attempts have been made to regulate groundwater extraction, but these efforts face enormous challenges. Illegal wells proliferate, sometimes hidden in basements or concealed behind building walls. 
Even reputable businesses often rely on their own deep wells due to the inconsistent municipal water supply. Another overlooked aspect of this crisis is pollution. Many rivers in Jakarta are heavily contaminated with industrial waste and garbage, reducing their capacity to replenish groundwater through natural filtration. Toxic runoff and mismanaged landfills also seep into aquifers, making it risky for some communities to rely on well water, even if that's their only available source. Meanwhile, official proposals to improve water infrastructure often stagnate due to bureaucratic hurdles or corruption. The result is a vicious cycle. As the city sinks, it becomes harder to build reliable water networks, which in turn forces more people to keep pumping groundwater. Climate change further amplifies Jakarta's vulnerabilities. Rising global temperatures are causing glaciers and ice sheets to melt, pushing sea levels higher. Given that Jakarta sits on the Java Sea, even a modest increase in sea level spells doom for lower-lying areas. It's not just storm surges that pose a threat. Regular high tides are already enough to inundate certain neighborhoods. Jakarta's response to sea level rise has been to construct or reinforce seawalls, but these barriers are stopgaps at best. In 2007, a fierce storm surge overwhelmed the northern sea wall, displacing thousands of people and causing massive economic losses. In response, the government embarked on the National Capital Integrated Coastal Development Plan, which includes a 40-kilometer-long seawall project. The idea is to protect the coastal region, but engineers face a grim reality. Every passing year sees parts of Jakarta sink deeper, making it harder to maintain these defenses at effective heights. Residents in coastal areas recount seeing streets transform into canals in just a few years. Abandoned homes with waterlogged floors now align certain districts, left behind by families families who have migrated inland in search of safer ground. In these drowned neighborhoods, the government has sometimes tried quick fixes, such as raising roads or building temporary barriers with sandbags. However, these measures often fail under heavy rainfall or high tides. Some locals have resorted to elevating their homes on stilts or constructing multi-story structures where the ground floor is sacrificed to floodwaters. These surreal landscapes highlight the chaos unfolding in a major Asian capital. Tourists seeking an exotic Venice of the East may find something darker, a city trapped in a losing battle with nature, where displacement isn't just a possibility, it's already happening. The question is less about whether Jakarta will be submerged, but more about how quickly the sea will claim entire districts. But Jakarta grapples with another monumental challenge, its staggering population density. With over 30 million people residing in the greater metropolitan area, the strain on infrastructure is immense. Traffic congestion isn't just a Jakarta problem. Cities like Bangkok and Manila also suffer from extreme gridlock. However, unlike Singapore, which has strict car ownership limits and efficient public transit, Jakarta lacks the infrastructure to support its population. Meanwhile, its air pollution rivals that of Delhi and Beijing, leading to rising respiratory diseases. Chronic traffic congestion ranks among the worst in the world, sometimes locking commuters in grueling multi-hour journeys each day. All those vehicles also worsen the city's air quality. Jakarta often battles smog that hangs like a toxic blanket over skyscrapers and slums alike. This pollution doesn't just affect visibility, it affects public health. Asthma, respiratory infections, and other pollution-related diseases are on the rise, placing additional stress on the healthcare system. And when flash floods strike, an increasingly common occurrence, those traffic-clogged roads become impassable. For emergency services, the stakes are even higher. Ambulances and rescue boats struggle to maneuver through submerged roads and labyrinthine side streets. Temporary shelters often overflow during widespread floods, leaving victims with nowhere to go. The constant crisis mode existence also damages the city's economy. Studies suggest that billions of dollars are lost annually to congestion, infrastructure damage, and diminished productivity. Underlying all these issues is a stark socioeconomic gap. Wealthy residents can afford private water supplies, higher quality drainage systems, and even elevated homes. In contrast, low-income communities often live in the most flood-prone zones, with minimal access to any form of flood defense. Indonesia's leadership has acknowledged that Jakarta's problems are too colossal to solve overnight. In 2019, President Joko Widodo announced the development of a new capital, Nusantara, on the island of Borneo. This bold plan has roots stretching back to the Sokano era, where the first Indonesian president hinted at relocating the capital due to overcrowding and environmental concerns. 
But now, the initiative has taken on an urgent tone. Nusantara aims to be a sustainable, modern city, free from Jakarta's chronic congestion and sinking woes. Master planners promise green spaces, robust water management, and eco-friendly transportation. While this futuristic blueprint dazzles the imagination, critics argue that it diverts attention and resources away from fixing Jakarta's immediate problems. After all, relocating government offices doesn't eliminate the fact that Jakarta remains the economic heartbeat of Indonesia. Millions still depend on the city for jobs, education, and daily life. The costs of building an entirely new capital are staggering, with estimates hovering around $35 billion. Some environmental groups worry that constructing a brand new metropolis in Borneo will jeopardize one of the planet's oldest rainforests, displacing wildlife and indigenous communities. Moreover, the project might not be completed for years, potentially decades, leaving Jakarta in a precarious limbo while the capital shifts elsewhere. So can Jakarta be saved? Theoretically, yes. Scientists and engineers have proposed solutions ranging from reducing groundwater extraction to building a massive artificial island off the coast to act as a barrier. But these solutions require billions of dollars and decades of effort. The harsh reality. Jakarta is already too far gone. The land has sunk beyond repair, the sea is rising, and the Indonesian government has placed its bets on relocating the capital, effectively conceding that saving Jakarta might be too monumental a task within a short time frame. Yet, for tens of millions who remain, a new capital on Borneo offers little solace. Their survival depends on immediate action, long-term vision, and a unified effort to tackle the roots of this geographic catastrophe. So if you were in charge, how would you save Jakarta? Share your solutions in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more incredible insights.